Welcome, you guys. Welcome to the Heal Black Joy podcast. Hi, I'm Lola Troy, the host and curator of Heal Black Joy, the learning platform for our community to heal our black joy with tangible and attainable programs for the mind, body, soul, relationships, and businesses. And in today's conversation, this month, we are celebrating authors in our tribe. I'm super excited to be highlighting some of our very own Heal Black Joy tribe members who are authors. So we started a Heal Black Joy book series. And tonight we're going to be talking to the Limitless Lady about the Limitless Leader I Affirm Planner. So welcome you guys. Today, my guest is Dr. Mary Hemphill. She is a lead, leadership expert and coach, K-12 educator and administrator, author and a sp inspirational speaker with over 15 years of professional experience as a teacher, administrator, state director, and university professor. Dr. Mary understands the importance of fusing education empowerment and leadership together as she works with a learning and working communities in You guys are in for a treat tonight. Hey, oh, my sister. Hi, my love. How are you? I am so, so excited. I'm super excited about tonight. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. I could not wait for this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> we going to get in, lady. Look here. Uh, ah, that makes me... Listen, and I just want to thank you for your support. I mean, you are incredible, and just thank you so much. You're so welcome. I mean, we are part of the same tribe. We are trying to get people to to just get to their limitless potential yes. and heal their joy all at the same time. Exactly. You know? I love that. I love, I love it. I love it. So while we are getting into this Heal Black Joy series, what was your inspiration for cre creating this I Affirm Planner? Because it is yummy. It's got some good stuff in here. <laughs> Thank you so much. Honestly, when it came to the affirmations, mm -hmm. I came face to face with my mortality. And when that happened, um, about three months before that, I had found out that I had fibroids. And it was a conversation. I'd heard about fibroids. I had, I had read stuff online. I had girlfriends who had it. But I would, had experienced no external symptoms. Right. So I was just living my best life and going along. And one day I went for my physical. And the doctor asked me, she said, how many children have you had? And I said, I've had none. I've, I've never given birth. And she said, well, something's going on. And I came face to face with the reality that not only was surgery going to be needed, but we needed to talk about alternative options if I ever wanted to have children. So after that surgery, when you're sitting, and again, I had a, um, a pretty major surgery side to side, you could, there's nothing you could, you're laying there and you're just trying to figure out what is the thing that I can do for myself. And I can, I can open my mouth and the, at the very least, I can speak life to myself. Mm, that is so powerful because as a woman, as a black woman, yeah. you know, we, first of all, we're like bottom of the totem pole. I work in healthcare. 
we are bottom of the total pole when it comes to our health care. Yeah. Um, we have to advocate for ourselves to begin with. Yes. And then just the, the, the conversation when you're going to your doctor, knowing that you're putting your health in the hands of someone who might not necessarily think so highly of you just because you're a black woman, you just go. because you're a woman, you uh, you know, there are just these health disparities, you know, uh, uh, there's this disconnection mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. black individuals mm -hmm. and how we get treated when it comes to health care. Yeah, there you go. So I can't imagine like what was running through your mind while you're laying there after surgery so and you got to speak life to a situation. To a situation, a situation that you can't see the end of and a situation that also caught you by surprise, but it was happening within you. Yes. And I, I remember one day I logged on actually to Instagram and there was a young lady and she was going live and it was her morning mindset. And she said, the one thing I do in the morning is I speak affirmations to myself. The most powerful words you can say is I am. Mm. Ever you put after that, that is exactly what you're going to become. Yeah. And so I immediately in the hospital room, my mom, I remember my mom was asleep and I said, I am healed. I am going to be a mother one day and I am going to make it through this. Literally, that's the only three sentences I could muster after anesthesia and being on pain pills and trying to determine because the doctor was coming in and she was like, okay, we got to do a lap. We have to do a lap. Where? Like, what? So I had to speak life to myself. And once I started doing that, I could not go a day without saying affirmations. I started writing my own affirmations. I started looking up and researching what it is yeah. and developing that faith for what I was saying. And yes, that, that is, that's amazing. Um, I love that you were talking about I am and what you say after that brings yes. it to existence. Yes. Because um, with my coaching clients, I teach a lesson on mastering manifestations. Mm. And we, I teach them in this lesson about actionable language, how you can quantum leap yourself yes. into it happening very quickly, um, but you got to use actionable language. And I am is a part of that actionable language. Yes. Um, some people say, I need, I want, I will have, and that's not actionable, exactly. right? So I am, I have, I create, yes. I move. Yes. This language is important. And you've got it all through this thing, my dear. <laughs> okay? You got it all through here. Um, was that intentional on your part? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because we have to speak it in the present as if it's happening. Yes. It's in order for our bodies to speak into and, and align with what it is that we're saying. If we speak to the past, I, I was healed or I will be healed. No, you have to take control of the now. Once you take control of the now, I am. I am creating. I am developing. I am implementing. I am winning. Whatever that is right now, speak. Yeah. Because your mind doesn't know the difference between the reality or whether or not this is a dream reality yeah. fantasy your mind is like oh okay she's healed it sends a message to every single part of your body healing 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 get get in line get in get line. alignment get in alignment and that's just your body because yeah. you're your profession too yeah I am a fill it in with what it is that you want to become. And then you start to manifest the attitude, the persona, the lifestyle of that profession. Before you know it, you're signing on the dotted line. Yeah. You're yeah. You. That, this is good, you guys. Uh, I, I need you to share this out because she is giving us gems as we go. I'm trying to tell you <laughs> it's a lesson. It's going to be a live lesson tonight. Um. In your planner, you had some gems that I want to point out and talk through some of them. Okay. okay. One in particular that resonated with me was, I will never shrink who I am or what I do to make others feel comfortable. When I saw that affirmation, it reminded me of something that I wrote last week about Supreme Court Justice Katanji Brown's Jackson's confirmation. Okay. So I'm going to read it to you and then I want you to take over. Take over. Yes. 
So when I got the word that she was confirmed, I was sitting in a restaurant and I was just like, okay, I got to write this down on, and I just wrote it on Facebook really quickly. So this is what I said. To the highest levels we go on the shoulders of the strongest women, having to defend our existence in spaces that don't put down the welcome mat. Mm -hmm. The bell has rung and the trumpet sounds. No more shrinking ourselves to make us digestible for others. We have experienced the lowest of lows and have dreamed the highest of highs because it was never set up for us to know the contrast. Jail cell is no longer the pictured representative. Supreme Court is repping now. We got the sauce, always had it. It's in every thread of our art and artistry from music, sports, art, fashion, literature, plays, shows, and movies. Come on. It's in our coded greetings that most don't understand and cannot duplicate. The fist bump, slap each other on the back, the hug of life, the silent eye connection that tells you that you need to go and somebody, either that we need to get out of here or something shady has gone down. Yeah. The celebration of our outfit of the day summed up in two words. Okay, girl. It's in our grandmother's wrist when they don't measure how much went into the pot, but it comes out perfectly seasoned. Yes. It's in our history and our future. We're just tired of our excellence being diminished, erased, mm -hmm. and rewritten. We breathe in this new air that says that we can do be and achieve anything we set our minds on. We are our ancestors' wildest dreams. Their tears turned into literal manifestations. All oh, the heavens are rejoicing on this day. It's time, been time, on time. Oh, yes. Well, I love this. That aligns exactly what I'm talking about. When you say and shrink yourself. I don't care if it's the way that you speak. I don't care if it's the way that you dress. I don't care if it's the way that you show up, whether it's in an email or whether it's face-to-face -face communication. When you shrink back the fullness and the essence of who you were supposed to be, there's either an ancestor, somebody in the room, or somebody who's gonna walk in the room who has been entrusted to you to not shrink back that thing because you're the one that's gonna knock it down, break the pattern, or just obliterate the system so that those people behind you, those people who fought for us, or the one that is coming, won't have such resistance. And when we start to step into that fullness, mm. I say this to everybody all the time. Some people say, Dr. Hempel, like you're really intimidating. And I said, is it the fact that I'm intimidating or are you intimidated? Because when we shrink ourselves back, what we're saying is, I'm babysitting your insecurities. Woo! I, you see something in me, or the way I move, or the way I show up, or the way that I do, or my life, that in you, it's calling out to you and saying, you want this thing. You want to be this thing. You want to act this way. But it is not my responsibility to hold your insecurities so close and take care of them and water them when they need to be watered and feed it when it needs to be fed and put it to bed when it needs to be. I mean, I can't babysit your insecurities. Mm -mm. I have a responsibility to show mm. up who I am because I've been entrusted to this moment in time. Mm. Entrusted is such a powerful word because we yes. are literal manifestations of our ancestors' tears. And why would we not show up as our pure, authentic, strong, yes. powerful selves yes. in that moment? Yes. And represent that. In, in its fullness. And I heard a speaker say uh, two weeks ago, the fact that you were even born right now means the moment needs you right now. We didn't need you 400 years. The reason Shirley Chisholm was born when she was born is because that time in history needed a Shirley Chisholm. Right. This time in history needs a Lola to heal Black joy. This time in history needs a Mary to help people become limitless. This time in history, eight years ago, almost 12 years ago now, we needed a Michelle Obama to break the... Do you see what I'm saying? Everybody's entrusted. Yes, yes. Every, Rosa Parks, she was entrusted. Yeah, yeah. When we start to think about the fact that you're not only entrusted to yourself, that there's a greater plan and there's a greater opportunity for you to show up, you'll never shrink back again.
it's 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 not up to you it's bigger than us it is so much bigger than us yeah <laughs> oh, <laughs> i always tell my i tell my my clients i tell my group of friends uh -huh. when they come to me and they're they're like lola i you know they want that pity party i said listen buckle up buttercup because guess what your stuff, whatever you're going through right now, is yes. not about you. Yes. Yes. It's Absolutely. not about you. It's about how you show up in this world and how you're going to represent so the next person that's going to go through what you're Come crying on. about right now can look at a manifestation and see that you made it and that's going to let them know that they can make it too. There you go. We, we have to remember, and I say this to leaders all the time, you're a walking billboard for your brand, for what you believe, for what you think. And if somebody is watching you and saying, because of her, I can, or maybe I can model something after this. When you decide to shrink back, you don't understand. You're sucking the power and the life out of somebody else's experience. And I know it's going gonna, it's gonna to look funny. It's going to feel weird. You're going to stand out and you're going to be different. But history makers are rule breakers. They're not rule followers. I had that shirt on last week. I had that shirt on last week about, about how you there, nobody can do be, be, make history just by sitting back. You got to shake it up. Shake you it up. You got to shake it up. Shake it up. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That is so good. That, that is, is so good. Um, there's so much conversation that's going on in the podcast sphere uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> about men and women and how we communicate with one another. So in my dating life, and this is this is going to one of your affirmations. Okay. In my dating life, many, many moons ago, <laughs> I dated a frog uh -huh. that took my Southern kindness for weakness. Uh -huh. And there's this one affirmation that you created that states, I'm able to recognize the difference between genuine love and manipulation that one hit so home for me mm -hmm. because i think people are genuinely kind uh yep. but ma manipulative people will smell that a mile away yes. right if they if you have a genuine person who's just extremely kind they take that like oh i want to mm -hmm. i want to i want to you know this is my prey at this yeah. point yeah, yeah, yeah. so when you say that i'm able to recognize the difference yes Yes. Because a lot of people are walking around here, they're not able to recognize the difference, but they need to speak it so that their, their mind and their body and their spirit can align with them, what, what they're saying. Exactly. And, and, you know, we're talking about romantic love, but I'm going to expound it just a little bit because you can have manipulation in friendships. Yes. You can have manipulation in partnerships, business partnerships or whatever. Yes. But that genuine love that I'm talking about, you have to define that before you go out seeking and before you get into a situation because our mental model will say, well, he's like tall and I asked for tall, but I forgot to ask for him to be kind to other people or I forgot to ask for her to be financially stable. That genuine love inside of you, once you define it for what it is you love, what is it you need and what it is that you want, there's something inside you that quickens once you have developed it. We talk about, we're in a red flag culture, but I want to turn that conversation on its head. We need to be a green flag culture. Yes. Because when your energy aligns, your discernment is telling you there's something that's just not quite right. But because we've gotten into a scarcity model, we think even though this love looks manufactured, I don't know if it's going to come again. But I'm going to go okay, back. Okay, wait a minute. You uh, know, I do, I, do, I do this to you all the time. Uh -huh. Okay, go back. Okay, okay. Red flag culture, meaning yeah. that we're focusing on the red flags, yeah. which means that we're aligning with the red flags, which means that we're going to attract the red flags. Absolutely. Is that what you're saying to me? Absolutely. Because like breathe like. You're never going to plant an apple tree and get pineapples. So if all you're doing is energy around red flags, focused on red flags, talking to your girlfriends and your guys about red flags, and then you're surprised that you're attracting the lady or the woman 
that represents every red flag you talked about, why are we not refocusing that attention to green flags? What are the values? What is the moral compass? What is the makeup of the individual that you're seeking? And then water that, fertilize that, talk about that, gossip about that. Like attracts like. Mm, 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 mm. the way that I'm processing this right now because I've had several girlfriends and, and this has just been this polarized conversation uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, you know surrounding the Kevin Samuels model which a lot of podcasts are starting to adopt where it's pitting men and women against each other and they're talking about what a woman doesn't bring to the table or what a man doesn't bring to the table. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of conversations going on in that, in that stratosphere podcast world that is doing this particular model. Yes. So with what you're saying, I'm now processing that the model needs to change and we need to start talking about our strengths and the things that we do very well and complement those things and then we can perhaps attract those type of people. Is that what you're saying, Dr. Exactly, Mary? Exactly, exactly. And, and, and also just with words, let me talk, just talk about words. That question, what do you bring to the table? And I go back to a time when my parents used to like, just take my sister and I on all these trips. And I remember this one particular trip, we did a family trip to Chicago. And in that restaurant, they served escargot. Well, I'd never had escargot. I could barely spell it, right? I was like, Mom, Dad, like, what's this? What is escargot? Mm -hmm. Never had it. Once I ate, it's a delicacy. Okay, I get it. Once I had it, I was like, okay, this is pretty, this is pretty good. Now I have a palate for escargot. When you ask somebody what they bring to the table, but you have never experienced a healthy relationship, You've never experienced vulnerability. You've never experienced transparency. How do you know that you're bringing something to the table that this individual may have never experienced before? And you're gonna blow, you're gonna blow their mind. It's exactly what they need. But that question is so limiting because you don't know what it is you need sometimes. So if I only give you what's on the menu, but there's something at a different restaurant that you need for your fullness, for your success, for your best limitless life, you're limiting me off rip by asking me what I bring to the table because I'm still evolving. There may be something in the 10 months that I acquire that's going to change your whole trajectory. <laughs> Can we talk about restaurants for a second? Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you used that. I'm glad you used that particular example uh -huh. because I remember watching something on social media where this woman went into a restaurant and she was sitting down and she ordered you know you know she was trying to figure out what she was going to order she ordered her food uh -huh. and then there was this table of people that came in after her and they got their food delivered before she did so she was sitting there all upset because she didn't get her food that was delivered but what the chef had prepared for her Yes. Madam, okay. He recognized that this was someone that he knew from his past, and he wanted to give her the finest dining experience. So, of course, it was specific for her. It was the, the top of the line menu. It was nothing that was even on the menu. It was something that he created specifically for her. Come on, Lola. Come on. So sometimes when we're talking about what's on the menu and what do you bring to the table, it doesn't, it, sometimes the chef has to bring out the best for you. Yes. Come on. Sometimes you inspire the chef to create something better. I get, Lola, you're going to make me run around this office. Yes. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Because and people don't get that. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. People they don't get that. And it's all, it's all about alignment. It's all about what you're saying to yourself because you can have a better experience. You create a different experience with what you say to yourself and what you put out into this world. Again, that part, that part. That and, part. And if you already have like a canned speech of, I do this, I go here, I go there, you're not even giving anybody the opportunity to be inspired. 
which is limiting their experience. You may be the person that inspires that individual to change, to transform, because people don't change people. Your mindsets change you, right? So I love that. You're not even giving that individual the time to cook up something different for you. Mm. Serving of it. Mm. And that was the thing that I recognized in that, in that example, too, was that she didn't even know that she was deserving of it. Sometimes your blessing is, is, is coming to you, and you don't even think you deserve it. Ooh. And you're just sitting there mad because you're looking at, you, you're not even looking at what's going on in front of you. You're looking at the other table. You're so focused on what everybody else is doing and what everybody else is getting. You mm. don't even realize that the master, the, the real chef, the real creator got something special cooking up for you in the back. And you can derail that blessing with your words. I, I need y'all to go get this. I I, I, I need y'all. I'm going to put the link down so that y'all can go pick this up because she has the formula in this I Affirm Planner. That's all I need to say. Ah, okay. <laughs> You're right. Like, we can we can derail that whole blessing. Yeah. The opposite of life to our life. And just relinquishing control relinquishing control that's it that's, that's it um last week i talked to our good brother damian mcgee about his book move over i'm driving and he talks about having these experiences of whatever your you know pains your traumas mm -hmm. but not staying stuck there we have a in our community i don't know if we were taught this or we, it, it was something that we just saw and we modeled after our, you know, the generations before us. Mm -hmm. But when something happens to us, like we get that gut punch of trauma or that gut punch of pain, somehow we get yep. cemented there. We get stuck in this place. Yep. His belief is that the answers are in the momentum in moving forward. Yes. And one of your affirmations says, I will not use the past as a place of residence but rather as a reference to help me make the best decisions for my life. The word residence yes. is so strong because it's telling me, I'm big on words. Yeah. It's telling me that in my past, uh -huh. I've literally uh -huh. put a foundation on this past and I done set up shop here yep. and I've made it my residence and I'm just stuck right yep. here. Yep, yep, exactly, exactly. Because let me tell you what happens. When you take out residence, you get really comfortable and you surround yourself with all the things and all the people that make you comfortable. So you establish a pattern. And that's why we always say that breaking generational patterns is hard work. It's because it is. And I love the word that you use and that he referenced momentum. Because let me tell you why. Once I've taken up residence in this traumatic place in the past, do you know what else is happening? I'm also watering the seeds for whatever I believe, whatever it is that I want to do. I'm watering the seeds that are familiar to that area. Mm. My parents are from Buffalo, New York, and absolutely nothing against Buffalonians. But whatever is assigned to Buffalo breeds sickness. It breeds a culture of lack. It breeds all of these different things because that's the spirit that has settled in that area. So if my parents, my dad and mom, they'll say to you right now, if we hadn't gotten out of Buffalo, I'm not sure we would be experiencing the blessings here in North Carolina. When you take up residence, you also invite whatever spirituality, whatever beliefs, and whatever generations have spoken over that area unless you keep moving forward and be like, listen, I'm sending in a change of address form and I'm going over here because the momentum is going to help me outrun whatever spirituality, whatever demonic forces, whatever it is I've cooked up over here. I got to outrun it and get over into this new thing and mm. plant new seeds or else I'm going to get the same harvest that I got over here. That was not healing me. It was not moving me forward. It was not establishing any momentum in my growth. But if I get the momentum and I move over here, this is new. I'm shaking things up. 
That's why a lot of organizations, they don't like new leaders from outside the organization. Yeah. The spirituality and whatever they've been speaking over that organization, it shakes up because Lola showed up. And what Lola brings is very, very different to this culture and organization. And they say it's fresh eyes. It's not fresh eyes. You have a fresh spirit. Mm. So if you take our residence over here, you can't be surprised when all you get is what you planted right here. Got to move forward. You have to move forward. That is so that is so telling because when I think about particular areas, I'm from North Carolina. So the fact that you said North Carolina is, you know, the, the place that your parents decided to 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 take that momentum and take that that quantum leap and to do something different. Yes. There are a lot of people that are in areas, in relationships, in jobs, in situations that they're, they've planted, they've set up residence. Yes, well, yes. And they're, they're comfortable. And again, think about a house too. You don't just stay in your house. Like you decorate, like you get, you get every room right the way that you need it. You know your neighbors. You may have your holiday traditions. You're not moving. Yeah. You're not moving, that's stagnancy. And, and being stagnant is not going to allow you the opportunity to transform, to evolve. There, somebody said fresh spirit. Yes, it requires you to speak into that space and also know when it's time to pack up and move because timing is huge. And unless you've been speaking that, Sometimes your spirit, like it won't quicken enough for you to be like, okay, no, it's time for you to sell the house and let's, let's go. We got to get down the road. Mm, 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 mm. What do you say to those people that might not know that they are setting up residence? What do you say to those people? Because I, I talk to them all the time and they're like, but I'm afraid if they're coming from a fear-based thought process and they're like i'm afraid to start something new yeah uh the comfortability people don't people don't like to be uncomfortable dr mary they don't. i've come to the realization that people do not like to be uncomfortable it doesn't mean and that's so temporary it's very you know what i mean it's very very temporary but people do not like that so what do you say to those people that have a problem with uh being uncomfortable Getting into that momentum of, of of change and direction because I my I adopted this I take this from from Dr. Lacara she's she's she was my daughter's boss and she says you know when God has left the left the building whether it's a relationship a job you know a situation you know when God has left the building absolutely and when God has left the building it's time to move it's time to move so there's two things. Particularly, I want to address fear, and then I want to address the action. Two weeks ago, I had the opportunity to hear Denzel Washington speak, and he was just speaking from a place of just all, he just finished Macbeth. And so one of the questions that he was asked by the interviewer was, what, how do you do, what do you do? How do you know this is going to be a good project? How do you know this is going to be a good meeting? He said, I had to get over fear. Mm. But I'm going to tell you, fear is nothing but contaminated faith. When he said that, goodness I, gracious, you know, that's, that's what it is. Sometimes we can contaminate the one thing that we hope for, the one thing that we want to do. So in order to disinfect it, it's micro habits. It's the little small changes. If you're scared about starting a diet, that's fine. I'm not asking you to be clean eating on Monday morning and Sunday night. I'm asking you to just start reading the labels when you go grocery shopping. Mm. Mm, mm. about your profession i'm not asking you to go apply for a job tell your supervisor to be a reference i'm telling you to go on indeed and glass door and figure out what it is that you're worth and then compare that to your salary now maybe that will get you to going micro habits are the small changes that have less risk but huge return because it goes back to here once i see that people in this job in this area are making twenty thousand dollars more I'm disinfecting my faith. Now I have the courage to be able to have a conversation with my supervisor in HR. I disinfect my faith when I start looking at labels and see all the polysaturated fats. And I decide to put the chips back and I go get apple slices. Disinfecting your faith. 
And how you do that in small little changes and track those changes, that ends up being big changes. And before you know it, in a month, in two months, now you're clean eating and you feel good. You see the manifestation, your skin's clearing up. You have the conversation with your boss. They wanted to pay you more anyway. They were just waiting on you to open the door. And then you can say this, this uh, affirmation that's in your book that says, I surrender to the healing taking place in my mind, body, and soul. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> because now it's aligning up with what you're doing. Those, those yeah. micro habits that you're talking about, you're speaking those things over your life. You're, 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 you're doing the micro habits yeah. and everything starts connecting. Yes. Alignment. It will, uh, it will literally click in your brain mm -hmm. How and then you start seeing those those results. And when you start seeing results, it inspires you to keep going. Yes. And it's within you. And I tell everybody this like this book costs, but the words in it are free. Woo! The one thing you have, the most powerful tool you have is your mouth. What you speak over it is exactly what you are going to get. You're, you're not going to get anything different. Now, life may throw a curveball, but it's free. It's a free resource. Use it. <laughs> Use it. Right, right. What other, what other things do, did you use when you were laying in that hospital bed? I know you said you only had a couple of affirmations mm -hmm. that, that really resonated with you. Uh -huh. What other things did you align with those affirmations to get you out of the bed that connected your body to your words. Yes. For your healing. So one of the things you'll see daily is a today's playlist because faith comes by hearing. Mm. Yes, because you alluded to it a little bit. Sometimes we grow up hearing things that aren't necessarily true. Maybe it's your grandmother. Maybe it's your godfather. Maybe it's somebody in your community. But faith comes by hearing. So what I decided to do is curate a playlist and make sure that I had positivity, make sure I had motivational TED Talks, make sure that I had YouTube videos that were speaking life to me. Maybe it was a skill I wanted to learn because it was very easy, pop in my Airpo AirPods and find something to listen to. So curating my playlist every day and making sure that my, I'm protecting my mouth gate and my ear gate was huge. And mm. one to put some barriers and some stop gaps in front of those two things then I started to curate the lifestyle that I wanted and people do not understand this I actually have a degree in music and I know that there are certain core chordal structures yes. that bring and, 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 and fit or affect a certain mood in you right and it's like you so I'll, I'll give you an example the song happy by Pharrell yes the yeah. reason why that song not only resonated with us in particular, but it just went all over the world and it was appealing to children. And it was, I remember he did an interview with Oprah and she showed all these people in different countries that, you know, listen to this song and it just changed. I mean, it was one of those songs that just hit the stratosphere, yes. right? Exactly. It was because of not only the chords in the song mm. that, evokes this 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 feeling mm -hmm. that things are going to get better yes i remember any time that i get depressed i will literally put that song on blast it in the shower and i'm just singing and the words of the song are in alignment with the chordal structure of the song which brings on an emotion yeah. that's going to change how you feel in that very moment absolutely absolutely and sometimes <laughs> Be it past being a place of residence, sometimes we'll go back and play that one song that we know strikes a chord of sadness and depression. And then we'll wonder why we can't get out of the funk. Change what you're putting in your ear game. And like you said, music is therapy. It is. Music is therapy for your mind and your body and your emotions. Curate what you're listening to. And also, audit what you're listening to a lot of times just like they say everything that looks good isn't good everything that sounds good isn't good isn't good it isn't so it isn't and i don't want to 
I don't want to knock our history, but a lot of the spiritual songs that we listen to growing up are songs that are very, very limited in their in in the lyrics. It this is limited sounding. It's the chords are very dark. Yes, the chords are very uh are very trying and yes. struggle chords. I call them struggle chords. Struggle chords. I love I, that's what I call them because they were in a struggle. They were in a struggle. So the chords evoke this emotion of struggle. So yes. that's why you feel that. That's why you feel so heavy when you listen to spirituals. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. You're feeling and hearing their struggle. That's their art. Art communicates what the artist is living through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So please surround me with positive motive. And not to say that all the time, everything has to be sunshine. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying that the balance absolutely has to be more positive than negative. What was your go-to song? Oh, what was my go-to song? Mm, that's a good question. That is a great question. I absolutely love everything, and this is going to sound really crazy. I absolutely love everything Shaka Khan. Ain't nobody. Mm. Hey. Let me tell you something. <laughs> she is just a powerhouse. Yeah, yeah. And she exudes joy. Like, I can't remember if I ever read an article or anything where she was just negative. Yeah. And every woman, all of those pieces, ain't nobody, all those things. It was the empowerment. When I think of her, I just think of empowerment. And so listening to her, it just gets you moving. And those chords. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Old school chords. Yeah. So when I would listen to that, and I'm every woman, particularly, you know, being in the hospital at that point, it was almost just empowering and alongside the affirmations and just remembering that I am a woman and that my body was created to do amazing things. Yes. Because the circumstance may have t said different, but I spoke to the circumstance. And I'll tell you, when I went back to the doctor four weeks after for my post-op and she asked me to sit up and I sat up on the table, she was like, how did like, how did you do that with no assistance? Like at this point, you're still not even supposed to be able to roll over on your own or do any of those things. Mm. I said, doctor, listen, you, you are fantastic and all of your certifications and all of the information you have shared with me, but I partnered with you in this healing and spoke healing to myself. Mm. That I'm not gonna stay stuck there. I said, so you're just seeing the manifestation of words I've been speaking for the last month. Mm. That is powerful in itself, too, because I think a lot of times when people have health challenges, mm -hmm. you know, especially like post-surgery, mm -hmm. they will get, people will get in their heads about things. And it's like, yeah, the doctor did what they had to do, but there's also a part that you have to do as a patient. Say it again. Yes. I love that you said partnered with. With you. Yeah, Exactly. What does that mean for you to partner with your doctor? Because I know there's some, going to be somebody on here uh -huh. that is going through something health-wise. Yes. And they need to understand what partnering really is and what that really means. And the, the first thing, it starts from the onset. When you go in for a job interview, you are making sure that they're a good fit for you and you're a good fit for them. When you speak to your healthcare provider, you need to make sure you're a good fit, fit for them and they're a good fit for you. Yes. It, if I had heard her saying things like, well, you know, your only option is a hysterectomy or, you know, you're only you're going to be on meds for like the rest of your life. I would have been like, I, I can't partner with you with the with the with the exterior that I need you to help me heal so I can live my best life. Yeah. But when partnering with her, I am taking the medical information, the certifications, the years she has spent becoming an MD. And I'm saying that I'm going to be an active participant because. Here's the thing. She performed the surgery. She was there for me along with the treatments, but she didn't go home with me at two o'clock right. Right. and speak life to my life. She wasn't with me at noon when my mom and my sister had to figure out how to, you know, get me around the house. So I had to partner with her. I had to take what she gave, what she brought to the table, and I had to bring what I bring to the table and say, together, we are partners in my healing. Yes. I can't just leave it to you because you wake up every day to heal thousands of people. 
I'm waking up every day to make sure that Mary is her best self. You are your best advocate for your body and your health, mentally, emotionally, and physically. So partnering with her meant, I'm going to take what you gave me, and I'm going to apply it and let it resonate. But I'm also going to do the work. Faith without works is dead. Is dead. Work so that I'm speaking, I'm eating right, I'm moving, so that when we partner together, we get a much better result than if I just put it in your hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's a, another a, another strong lesson that we have to understand. No matter what the circumstances are, we, we have to take ownership for our part that we play in it. Yes. In all of our healing, whether it's physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, we have to take some control. We have to have some reign over it because if we put it in the hands of somebody else, you don't know what you're going to You can't be upset because they might not have the same intentions. They might not have the same intentions. Or the same wherewithal to be able to, to help you or partner with you. So absolutely. You, you, you wake up in the morning. And you have to decide, okay, where is my energy? Where are my resources? Where are my words going? And when you partner with somebody or something or an opportunity in that, you're actively still moving your feet. One of my affirmations says my mind, my thoughts, and my decisions are always moving toward my goals. I can think a thing, but I can't, I can't think or heal something just with thoughts. I literally have to align my mind and my words. And then my decisions also have to reflect that goal. Without all three, that's when you get misalignment and you wonder why you're not getting results. You wonder why you're not moving. You wonder why you're not getting that momentum. It's because something is not just, something is, is wrong. Something is out of alignment with the goal that you have. How important is aligning your words with your goals? with your goals like you you just you talked about how we have to be in alignment to get to those things how important is that your your words what you're taking into your ear gates what you're what you're looking at yes. what you're saying yes. how important are all of those things for alignment to get to that you know that said goal that you want absolutely it's critical it is absolutely critical if i want to become an astronaut I have to speak life into learning everything I need to know about being an astronaut. I need to make sure the decisions I'm making are going to get me around other astronauts so I can learn from, from them, their culture, and how they train and how they move. I can't be over here telling mom because mom has always been there for me. Mom knows my struggle. Mom, I don't think I'm ever going to be an astronaut. I, I just don't think I'm going to make it. The misalignment happens with your words. You just completely derail and hit the pause button on what it is that you're working for. The same is true if you want a promotion. The same is true if you want to find your kingdom spouse. The same is true if you want to heal your body. If you're over here doing this, but you're over here saying this, you might as well pack it up and head on home because you're derailing and pausing your own blessing. The same is true with a compromise. Sometimes mm. we have a goal, and then there's people in our life who derail those decisions. Or there's opportunities in our life that we've latched onto that derail our decisions. And you have to have the courage to say, it's my life and I can hire and fire accordingly because there's no alignment with you and my life and the goal that I'm getting to. That's a decision. But when we prune, it always grows back better, stronger, faster, more vibrant. How does one recognize when they are out of alignment with their goals? Because I have seen this uh, so many times in, in my coaching clients, I, I, and I have my thought process on it. But when someone comes to me and they're like, Hey, Lola, I'm in this relationship and I really love this person, but I got this situation over here that I know that is going to take me, you know, to the stratosphere of, of, of opportunity, but yeah. this person is not, you know, on board. What do you think I should do? Absolutely. I'm going to say this. Anytime there's misalignment, it's a breadcrumb to the work you need to do. Either it's triggering something that you haven't healed from, 
it's highlighting something that you need to get right in this season because next season you're going to need it. Yeah. Lean into it. And the last piece is when the flow stops, you need to stop. I don't care if it's a conversation. I don't care if it's an investment. I don't care if you're working on a project for work or planning a honeymoon with whoever. When the flow stops, stop. Be still and figure out and audit what happened here that changed the trajectory of the flow. Do I need to work on this thing? Do I need to stop avoiding this thing? And what work can I do so that in the future, this thing doesn't continue to stop my flow? Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Showing you where you still have work to do. And that's okay. It's when we continuously be say, oh, you know, that's, that's just who he is. Okay. But that's going to sound very different three months from now because now you've allowed it. Yeah. Yeah. From the work with it or worked with that person and addressed it. So when you decide to do that, all of these things are just setting off little little triggers and little highlights. And when you start leaning into those and doing the work, you're going to start to find that you flow better, yeah, work better, and you show up as your best self because you don't have to do all this like start, stop. It's almost like when you're in traffic. Start, stop, start. No, you're going to be free set. You're going to be on the highway. Everything's going to be clear. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> Mm-mm-mm. This has been so good, you guys. Oh, my God. I'm going to have to sit back and watch this all over again just to get every nugget that you gave us on tonight. What is one of your powerful, limitless affirmation that resonates with you in this season? Oh, that's so good. Um, I will say I am loving the sound of my feet walking away from things that are never meant for me. Mm, mm, mm. because sometimes when you're a leader and when you're doing the things and you're showing up differently, it can feel like if you walk away, it can feel like failure or it can feel like you, like you made a bad decision and people are judging you or whatnot. But when you decide that the sound of your feet walking away from people, things and opportunities that were never yours in the first place, and you can leave that energy behind you can walk so much more confidently into the next season and into the next thing that was always yours to begin with. But, but, but we had to know that you could recognize it. We had to know your discernment was on point because to get there and know that you're supposed to be there makes all those sacrifices worth it. So hearing it, hearing, it. hearing your feet walking away it's confirmation and it's, it's, it's saying that it's okay that I'm leaving this behind and I can just keep going. Okay. Because either the flow stopped or the triggers started and it was never yours to begin with. It goes back to what I said. When you babysit other people's insecurities, do you know yeah. how baggage, like that stuff weighs on you. Yes, it does. And your shoulders get heavy. Your mind gets bogged down. You get clogged. Some people are frustrated because they're constipated with stuff that they were never supposed to be in and the decisions that they were never supposed to make. Mm. Free up the flow. Learn to love the sound of your feet walking away from people and relationships and jobs and opportunities that weren't yours to begin with so that you can walk into the things that are. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> Goodness gracious. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> you guys, I Affirm Planner, it is on Amazon. I am going to post a specific link on my page so that you can go to Amazon to get this book, this planner for you. It is, I've already bought so many, I got to go back and buy some more because I have told my girlfriends about it and they're like, Lola, can you order me one? I absolutely can. I absolutely can. Oh. This is going to be my gift to people because I think it's so important to have affirmations, to have daily affirmations. And sometimes people don't know how to come up with affirmations. Right. 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 But those of us that do, such as yourself, I do it. Uh, because I'm a writer, I know several people that write and they're, they're very good at affirmations, but some people just don't, they struggle with the wording.
They right. struggle with the actionable language. They right. struggle with coming up with creative words that will quantum leap them into a better yeah. limitless yeah. lifestyle. Yeah. So this is such a good, 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 good planner, you guys. Um, I, I, I don't know what else to say, but thank you for sharing all your knowledge, your expertise, your your energy with the Hill Black Joy Tribe. You know you are one of our 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 loved. You know we just love you so much. Thank. You. And when I tell you the feeling is mutual, Lola, I just everything that you. I'm like, okay, I, I got to get my popcorn and get myself together. <laughs> you are changing. You are using words to change the landscape. And you're bringing people who have the resources. And I'm honored. I'm honored to be a part of this community. Just thank you so much for being obedient and doing what you do because we need the healing and yeah. specifically of Black Joy right now. Yes. So yes. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank you so much for, for coming on again. Thank you for sharing with the Heal Black Joy tribe. And thank you, Heal Black Joy, for tuning in, you guys those that are tuning in live tonight and those that will be tuning in after on our Hill Black Joy YouTube channel. So I appreciate you all for tuning in tonight and I'm going to say good night and make sure that you check my page for the I Affirm Planner by Dr. Mary Hemp Hill. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.